In this video, I'll explain what a non-fungible token or NFT is all about. And we're starting right now. Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Keystone Financial Academy. My name is Elliot and if you're new to this channel, I invite you to join the community by subscribing and turning on notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. And if you want all the financial knowledge that I talk about on this channel summarized in one spot, be sure to check out my newly published textbook, The Keystone Financial Guide, and that is available at the website right below. Okay, let's get this video going. So chances are you may have heard of a non-fungible token or NFT for short as it was all over the news and people were talking about it in the spring of 2021. It's actually not a new concept having been around since 2014, but with some very pricey digital artwork being purchased in recent months, NFTs suddenly got everyone paying attention. So what the heck are they and what do they have to do with digital art? Let's take a closer look. NFTs are part of the digital currency phenomena. And to really understand what an NFT is, you need to understand crypto and blockchain, as NFTs exist mostly on the Ethereum blockchain network. In this video, I will assume that you understand what cryptocurrencies and blockchain is, but if you need a review or an introduction, I have a video on that very topic, and there's a link in the description below, and the video will explain crypto and and blockchain in detail. So an NFT is essentially a one-of-a-kind unit of data that is entered into the blockchain digital ledger. It is then tied to some sort of object of value such as digital art and it then certifies that object to be original and unique. Now you can make copies of that object all you want but the original remains the original. A physical comparison would be an autographed baseball card. You can make color copies of it and and put in a cardboard stock and it may look like the real thing but in reality there's only one original copy because the baseball player only autographed one baseball card. The non-fungible part of the NFT name refers to the fact that the token is not mutually interchangeable the way money is for example and remains unique which is of course the very reason NFTs are in use. So all this is just a technical description of an NFT but what is the purpose here and how are they being used? There are many uses that have popped up over the years, but the biggest application, at least so far, is with digital art. There are quite a few people out there, most of them with some significant cash laying around, who wish to have an original piece of digital art, and are willing to pay for proof of this. The artists create the art, then attach them to a non-fungible token, and then auction off the art piece. Blockchain technology then assures a unique signature and ownership of the NFT, thus guaranteeing that whoever purchases the digital art has the original copy, which for some people is just as important as owning the actual art itself. The NFT together with a digital piece of art can also be acquired by an investor who believes it will rise in value, and they can auction it off for a profit at a later date. In the end, the point is to have the true original object, whatever it may be, and the NFT can assure sure this in a way that cannot be forged. So what else can you associate with an NFT? Well, in theory, almost anything. Various collectibles, games, and music have been and continue to be tied to NFTs with various levels of commercial success, with the film and sports world also giving it a try. There are actually several other blockchain standards besides Ethereum that support NFTs, including ones from Flow, Bitcoin Cash, and Tezos. And the application is spreading across the crypto the world. NFTs are of course not without some critics. One problem involves storage of the actual item that is linked to the NFT, such as a piece of digital art or a song. The item itself is not on the blockchain, only the NFT is, and the link collecting the two can be corrupted or lost over time. Another criticism is one that's leveled against all cryptocurrencies in general, and that has to do with the environmental impact of mining and how much electricity it uses. 
challenges. And there's quite a bit of active development ongoing right now to create a different, more environmentally friendly approach to cryptocurrency mining. So in conclusion, what can we say about NFTs and as an investor, should they be on your radar? Well, some of the stuff going on right now with digital art and NFTs is a bit crazy. The most extreme example is the digital art collage called the first 5,000 days by the artist Beeple that was auctioned off for $69 million at Christie's. But there are many other examples from musician Grimes selling off artwork for $6 million to a variety of digital cat art and even a tweet attached to an NFT, which I won't even get into. So as a digital artist or even as a musician, this is a great new way to possibly make money. But as an investor, the jury is still out on this one. You could certainly buy a piece of art that is certified as the original by an NFT and then hold it with hopes of an appreciation, which is what some people are doing. Many others, however, think that while this is intriguing technology, anyone can make perfect replicas of digital files, so you're essentially just paying for bragging rights to say that you own the original, even if it practically doesn't mean a whole lot because a copy of a digital original is exactly like the original. There's also some talk that this is all a bubble and people are overpaying for NFTs because this is a relatively new and exciting application of blockchain, and I for one will certainly be keeping an eye on this technology to see where things go. But for now, I don't think I'll be spending money on any digital art tied to NFTs and as an advisor don't really recommend that at this point either. Okay, if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. And for much more information on the world of finance and investing, check out my newly published textbook, The Keystone Financial Guide, which is available at the website below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.